while Bob is changing out the stage to the next class of saws. Let me see what we're going to talk about next. Oh yeah, that chassis. We haven't done much with that. But there's a cool factor on these things. You know, we didn't talk about that. But there's just a cool factor to these things here. And Especially those. Yeah, and it transcends the practical value. The metrics for the modern day working saw and the metrics for the hobby having some fun with it are two whole different things. Totally different subjects, and I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. So you're measuring things with two, yards, two different yardsticks. But when you get into saws or machines of any kind for that matter, and then go about the process of taking uh, something that is cool and then making it run, there's an enjoyment all by itself in the success of making that project actually functional. And I think that's where I am on these. Not only do they perform well, yeah, you're not going to compete with a with a modern 90cc saw. Although, like I said before, they're not that far off. But there's some ownership in it, and they're just cool. There's a lot of cool things about this, this saw and this design. So that's why I like them. It's not a practical thing. It's an emotional thing. I have a big solo, too, that falls into that category. At some point, we have to do a video on that one. Well, you wanted to call this the forgotten chassis, and I was going to say... What are you going to call it? No, I won't say anything. Well, call it something. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it the one that, uh, geez, good riddance. <laughs> but no. <laughs> and we're not going to go there. That's not going to make not, the video. <laughs> the indications are this is not Walt's favorite saw chassis. Um, but we're calling it the, the forgotten chassis because you want... This is the 357, 359, 2156, 59 chassis. The intermediate thing between the 346 and the 372. I always kind of ignored this. Well, we both did, right? Well, we did. And, and part of it is, is I got to tell you up front, I had a tough experience with these at the county. And Well, yeah, and we're going to cut into why you did. But it's the same issue you would have with the 350s as well. And the 346s like. and all that, the whole thing. So we're kind of jumping ahead. Why am I the only one ever on the camera here? Oh. Um, all right, so... A chassis that we kind of been ignored, and I'll be honest, I kind of got into this late. I didn't kind of get, like, enthused about this chassis until they stopped making them. No, he started getting enthused about this chassis when he figured out this, this saw right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and this is the one that did it, and I'll show what it is. This is a, a 2156, which is the John's version of the, the 357. And as can be seen, we have a, a split personality crankcase there. Uh, this saw was either dropped or thrown out of a bucket. The guy really hasn't told me, and he just smashed it, and he busted a lot of stuff that other, you know, some of these other parts have been replaced. So I just felt like I wanted to do one of these things. And I put this together. Obviously, they're not a matched set. And it turned out, and this has got the 357-2156 cylinder on it. And this thing was really, really strong. And then I just started running it a lot. And then I got a couple other things here that I've done that, um, and here again, except for this new one here, which we'll show that in a second. These are all like same thing, dead saws brought back to life. That's um, a theme, by the way, for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we build saws from, uh, from the graveyard. Uh, so what's kind of interesting about these, just like the 390 and 385 are related a little bit to the... Uh, the 372, there's some things that are shared between these saws and a 346 and the three, not the 350 because it's a plastic case. I better bring the camera in. Yep, bring in the camera. That's why you're the only one on the cameras because we got to get into you stuff like this. It. And yeah, you got to hold it. Yeah. All right, so there's there's some bottom end differences. The 357s and the 2156s have the crank stuffers, which have been shown in other videos. The 359s and the 2159s do not. Same uh, cases though, right? Yeah, the cases are the same. Just the cranks are different. Yeah. Uh, well, the cranks themselves are other than having the stuffers on there. You could kind of take them off and, you know, if, if they were kind of beat up. And you could still use the crank without the stuffers, obviously. There are a couple things that are shared with the 346 chassis. One of them is... Uh, you know, all this chain brake stuff, this side cover is the same side cover that's on a 350. So That's good that's, to know. Yeah, so that kind of stuff is, you know... That's really good to know, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> the chain brake handles, they look kind of the same, but these are a little bit wider here. 
the guts in there with the spring and all that, that's the same. The coils essentially interchange, depending on what soil you got when it was made, there's going to be some different RPM limiters in the coils. Uh, what you have, you got to be careful, we talked about this with you know, other saws, uh, coil wires can bite you in the behind. Yeah, too if short. you use a 346 coil, the wire is going to be too small, it's going to be up against the thin and it's going to short out on you. These saws also suffered from, and this is why I know the ones at the county were blown up, these saws also suffered from the plastic intake boot that would go over here. Like here the again, 350s. This, yeah, this intake is the same. And that, that partition wall with the different plastic and a clamp, same on a 346 as it is on all these saws. Or the 350, you know, it's, it's, so it's the same thing. And so this diameter is going to be the same on any of the... the uh, the smaller chassis saws. Um, this is these are both a couple aftermarket. Just to show you what style they are, this is a 357 cylinder, and it's very similar to the 346 or the 372, where you got your quad ports. The uh, cylinder skirt, which is that's a stock on a 372, it's already gone on the uh, on the 357. So it's actually a pretty good, efficient design. Same idea with the 346. Oddball kind of staggered offset exhaust manifold or uh, exhaust gasket set up there. We got a couple of stuff to talk about on the muffler in a second. So, difference between the cylinders, the 359 is a different one. Now, we're going to talk a little bit. Each saw has got its own little personality here. This is the uh, the 359. If you can get in on that, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a 353. It has that cap a, right there. Yeah, the cap cylinder port. Versus these, which don't have a cap. Like yeah. These are pretty good. Uh, this particular saw, and I should have got into it back when Jason did this. You know, Motomatic did this one, and this is like an excessively loud bark. And to tell you the truth, he hogged out the exhaust port on this. It's not an exhaust port as much. It's like a garage door now. <laughs> and it's huge. But it runs. Yeah, this thing runs really, really, really strong. And I think, you know, people say because it's got a little better displacement, you're talking about a 47 millimeter piston here and a 46 millimeter piston on the, the 57s and 56s. Oh, and the other thing is because you have that cap in there, yeah. you can get to the transfers yeah, you and can, play yeah. around with them. If you want to take the cap off, you get these screws out, and you can go in, guys that want to grind on things, you can go in there, it's pretty easy to do. So what Bob is saying here, let me just kind of paraphrase, is stock, obviously the quad port, uh, 357 is a pretty high tune. It probably runs better than the 359. But if you're going to go and monkey around with port timing, it's easier to get into these cylinders because of those uh, caps on the transfer ports. And that makes them easier to get to. It's easier to monkey around with the port timing on those. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, the simple tricks work just on the 357 chassis, um, just like they will on a, on a 372. Or th this thing... You know, Jason did that, and it was it's a hoot to run this thing, and it's it's it started out as a beat up, ugly saw, uh, really scuffed up, and then you know because it had its kind of weird personality, you know, I figured well I'll turn it into a dub. There's actually a, a West Coast kit for the 357, 359 with the full wrap and the big spikes here, and this is here again. We we're talking a little bit before about like what's part of the hobby versus what's practical. They ain't practical, but it's kind of like. This is just fun. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, why do you need to put bigger tires on your truck? You know, because maybe it looks better. Well, this is just, this is just, because this is a play saw, although it can work really good. Do you want to talk about that muffler here? Actually, I want to point out that they have a, a brace on those, like the 346, unlike the 350s. Yeah. Did they ever have a version that had the mufflers rattle off? I don't think so, because these were the, the magnesium case. No, so. it's uh, only that 353 and late 350 cylinder were the ones that had the vibration that uh, spit the muffler bolts out. Since you brought this up, I don't think the, uh, the camera's gonna show this, but there's a, a divider, a baffle in this muffler, and then there's a big hole down below here, and, and then it goes up to the top. There's a tube in there. I don't think there's, there's no way to get in there with the light, but you gotta figure there's a baffle here, all right, a large hole in the baffle down below here, and then it goes up to the top. These saws stock are pretty quiet. And what we got here, actually, there's two different ideas for how and where you can mod this muffler. 
I mean, some guys that want to like break these wells and go in there and take the baffle out. There's a lot of work involved there. So there's two ways to do it, and there's a there's a way to do a, a muffler mod behind the baffle or in front of the baffle. Behind the baffle is what we got on this 357, and I'll pull this back here a little bit, and that is a deflector, even though you can't get them anymore, from a, a 254 or 55 style deflector, and you can pop a good size hole in there. Now you have an exhaust port, and it's it's before the, it's behind the baffle. So right. the, the exhaust gases aren't going through the baffle. But since you can't get this thing anymore, another place you can do it is, and again, there's a large hole in the baffle, like right down here and right about there. And where you can open up on some of them here, this is like a front mod. I don't know if you can get the actual hole there, but that hole is right next to the, the hole in the baffle, which is about that same size. It's a pretty decent size hole. and. Uh, that's the one that worked out on this, and that's another way to, to open up this muffler a little bit without having to go inside and mess around with the baffle. That's a nice looking saw right there. Yeah, and that saw has hardly been run. You know, the story with this, this is uh, a 2156, you know, with the winter group there. That's the, the heated grips. You got the switch up here and the heated carburetor. And I got this, I bought this new, and it was going to be like, well, I needed, you know, coming out of that 50cc thing, I needed, like, I just need a little bigger saw. And then I started going nuts on the hobby, and I started building a lot of other ones. And this saw is so clean that I've only used it a few times. That's maybe got three or four tanks through it. This saw, and we got, here we got, we got some different cylinder stuff to talk about here, if you're up for it. This saw here has... If you can get in right there, it used to have the automatic decompression thing, which pretty much universally failed, and you had to either replace the whole thing, or you had this way to just kind of plug off that port, all right, which is what I did with that. Um, and that's a, that's a Husqvarna part right there, right? Yeah, yeah, you can buy that. There's two parts really involved, the clip. Yeah. And the little boot that covers that port. Okay. Um, it's not a good idea. You think you can tell a story about sticking a sheet metal screw in there? <laughs> I did somebody a video else on did. the thing. Yeah, right. So it's, that's already been covered. Yeah. So this saw needed to be updated, and I updated it with that. I got rid of the deco, and I originally this saw came with the the plastic clamp, which is not in any of these because that's just like really bad news. So what's good news for the guy that wants to find these things? Because that plastic intake clamp failed a lot. There's a lot of saws that failed prematurely just because of that. So you can get them pretty cheap and you know here again dead saw salvage which is what we like to do and then you can update that and put a different cylinder on and you stick with that metal that metal clamp. You see Bob thought I was going to start uh, dissing on these saws. Yeah I was sure you were. Yeah but no I'm going to go the other way on these. See actually these are kind of like the the whole 350 uh, we did a whole series on those. We did a lot of them. And part of the reason we did that was because they were so cheap. And as Bob just pointed out, because of what happened with the intake manifolds, but also what happened with these uh, auto decomps, these are pretty cheap too. There's you know? another thing, and this is really important, and i got to admit that I just learned this recently. Um, I don't know if we can find one here. Which, which is doing what? There's Walbro carbs and there's Zama carbs. All right, and let's see. This is one of the wall bros. This is a wall bro. Yeah, I know that one is. Um, you're not going to be able to see much here because we have the, uh, the carburetor heater on there. People, everybody knows, like you know, the heating and the handles. But these winter saws, they also have a thermostatically controlled thing on a carburetor. Okay, so a lot of these carbs have some issues. And they've had to, you know, they got this double, what's a clean one here? You have this little plastic thing in between. This top plate doesn't set directly above the diaphragm. So you have this uh, plastic thing with some channels in it. And then you look over here to the Zama, which doesn't have that. And this is like the key for these saws. A lot of these carburetors failed, and they drove people nuts. And you put kits in them, and they still wouldn't work. The problem is on these wall bros, this is a cleaner one, so you can look at that. There's no vent here. You know, some carburetors are vented right smack in the middle. Some carburetors have a little vent there, like you'll see here on this Zama carb that's on this 359. And somebody told me this just actually like two months ago. 
drill a hole. Yeah, you vent the damn thing. Yeah. Put a vent in here, either right there or in the center, and I had one I did actually just this past week. It's perfect. And I've been waiting for one to come in, and it just would not run right. It would simulate that you had a really bad air leak. And all I had to do was, I said, let's try this idea. Boom, I put a hole in that plate. The thing runs great, fantastic. So, and I think of like how many of these carbs have gotten thrown out, a lot of them by me. <laughs> a lot of them by me too. Yeah, and it's like, that's all that it needs. It's just, you just take a drill and pop a little hole in there and vent the thing, because this, this, there's a couple of like channels there. You have this hole here, and then you have another one here, and that's supposed to kind of, it doesn't work. So, so that's a good way to save the carburetor. So there was a couple things. You had the automatic deco thing on a 357s, which was originally on that saw. When that thing failed, it took out a lot of saws. A lot of saws died because of that, and a lot of saws died because of the plastic intake clamp. And if, once you got rid of, you know, other than those two things. Three things this, with a hole. Yeah, right, and then the vent on the carburetor. And this, this one's got two vents, really, because it's got, on the Zama, it's got one right in the middle, and it's got one there. Right, so actually I should. These saws are all running good, even though they got the wall bros. And some people say, oh, the wall bro runs better. It may or may not, I don't really know. Like I, you know, and the thing is, I could take these off. It's easy. You don't have to take anything apart. You, the, the four screws are here. There's nothing in the way. You could take that plate out and put the vent in it. So once you solve those three problems, this has become a very, very good chassis. The one that I use the most. This one was built from dirty parts. I've used a little bit, but this thing runs really, really strong. And keep in mind, it's 46 mil. I think it's only like 56, 57 cc's. So you're a little bit shy at that 60 cc mark, but you know, I'll tell you the truth, once these things are set up right, they do run with the fabled, wonderful 262s. A little compression hit. With a lot less vibration. Well, a uh, couple of things to kind of add to it is, as he had mentioned before, there's a lot of interchangeability between that 350, 346, and this line, like the covers and the chain brake and stuff like that. Another subtle one is things like the uh, carburetor in the uh, filter holder. You got to do a little bit of monkeying around but you can get those to fit and flow a little bit more air on the 350 series assuming you do some porting to make it worthwhile. A lot of times it's not worthwhile but you can even exchange parts at that level. One thing they did beef up and I thought it was good is on the starters they kind of went back so this, this style, heavier duty uh, starter pulley, where you see that on like the 288s and the 272s and all those saws is still on like the, I think the 395. Because all that stuff with the plastic, uh, this one, they just decided to go back to that. So that but unlike the 2171s and 372s, the castings are the same. The colors are different. But you can bolt, if you needed to say, put a, you had one of these and you cracked the tank, you could put an orange tank on one of these saws and the handle would fit and everything else would stay the same. So the bottom line is with the John Fred Husqvarna is this one proves you can pretty much interchange anything. Uh, second is there's a lot of them out there that had issues with air leaks therefore can be had for relatively cheap and as a saw chassis it's about as easy to work on as any saw chassis you can get certainly as easy as a 350 but you get a lot more power. It's only a little bit bigger, but you get a lot more power as, as out of that. Yeah, uh, if you can work on a 350 or 346, you can, you can work, work on, on these. On these. Um, some stuff doesn't. There's a, even they look almost identical. There's a slight difference in these uh, throttle links. Um, the mounts, a couple of the mounts are the same. You know, the, the top ones are different. I think the bottom ones are the same. Um, the clips, you know, just little things like that. There's some, well, these clips, Husky clips, really. There's three colors. You can get the orange, you can get the gray and the husky, or the black for the Johnsrid. I mean, those clips are, they fit any of the new stuff. You can put the clips from a early 350 on here, or from this clip, or fit a new Husqvarna 450. You know, they really haven't, that's really the same clip no matter where you stick it. 350s, doesn't matter. It's one of the few things, it doesn't really matter whether you got a, uh, a metal case or a plastic case. And there is no plastic case homeowner version on this chassis either. Which is another reason why they're a good one to start with. Yeah. What about aftermarket support? Oh boy, it's um, it's limited, you know, it's like you can get, like this, you can get top ends. Um, no I plastic? Huh? No plastic? I haven't really seen any plastic yet. Uh, if you do see any plastic, obviously it's going to be the orange stuff, not the red stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen some mufflers. 
Uh, there's some uh, aftermarket mufflers out there, gaskets, uh, in, you know, the exhaust gasket, um, maybe the clutch, I'm not sure. Uh, really not that much. But here again, this is a chassis that only went away a few years ago. There's tons of these out there. The parts support OEM is certainly going to be there. Um, and you can find these saws or, you know, toast. The other thing, too, even if you want to buy an OEM top end, they're not that expensive. Prices jumped up on those, didn't they? Well, they jumped up a little bit. But so that's kind of, this, like I said, forgotten chassis. And that one that you're focusing on right there, I've actually run the heck out of that. Yeah, it but it's, seems it's to a be, proof of concept right here. Yeah. You know, part of that is, and it's getting to that mid-size saw, and I'll tell you the truth, not only did I kind of ignore this chassis, but for a long time was, you know, you got your 50cc and you got your 70s, and I was ignoring the whole size. And now it's sort of like, you know, do I want a big one or do I want a little one? Maybe I'm not sure, so you grab one of these, and it covers some of that ground. Well, we're making the ultimate old man saw out of a 60cc saw, and this is just the predecessor to the 555s and 562s. Well, then, then that's an interesting point to bring up then, because, you know, if you have, like, you had the 257, 262 chassis was replaced by this, and then this was, in turn, replaced by the 555 and 562 chassis. So how does it compare with the other two? Uh, Parts availability and cheap. Yeah, parts availability and cheap, it's fantastic. Um, it's simple, so it's got that advantage. Um, I think, you know, they, they, the 262, because it's hard to get, it's like magical. You know, I think they run with the 262s. And I think these got overlooked. Part of it is, with these 357s, you know, you're, you're, it's kind of hard to sell. Well, it's a, it's a smaller displacement. And uh, I think stock, I think the 262 would outcut it. You know how funny how fast stuff changes? Well, Snaps his fingers and bam, there's a 262 right there in the porch. Well, we're, we're starting to do a comparison. We're kind of rang it on this a little bit. Now, believe me, I, I do like 262s. Is it so far above and better this chassis? The answer is no. Let me ask you this before you even get into it. Put the cover on this. Oh, I know. You got to do the weight? No. Try to wait. Oh, well... Not worry about weight. What are, you, what are you checking for here? All right, starting from there, how uh, fast can you get to the point where you can clean the carburetor? Oh, yeah, it's like serviceability. One, what do you want to clean? Three, and it's off. This one, you've got, now this is minor stuff. No, it's not to me. This is major stuff to no, me. No, well, to, to people that say, that believe this is a better saw, this doesn't matter. It's not important to them, and I understand that. Well, now you've got to take the three screws here. You know, one thing that almost never gets pointed out with these two systems is, you know, when people talk about these clips, what they're talking about is how quick you can get in there, right? That's the number one thing, right? But the thing that nobody ever points out is... There's no top cover screws to worry about the holes getting stripped when they get loose. They can't loosen up, and you never have any thread issues with these like you do with, uh, you know, 390s or 372s or with stuff, you know, guys. You know, the still people probably are laughing at this if they're watching it, right, because they like to make fun of that. But um, if you never tighten those things up, you know, so now you have to take one, two, three, get them out. <laughs> like you said, and that's where it comes to a stop because now we're on film. And, yeah, you'd have to clutch around trying to get that damn thing off. No, I want to do another comparison here. Ah, okay. This well, is not, and this is not meant to be like a rip the 262 chassis, because I'm going to keep repeating. I love the things. But all I'm saying is is that people seem to hold them, you know, on a pedestal, and they look down at these, and I'm saying that it's at least a tie. Uh, so now you have to pick these up and say, all right. Now, one thing that's not disputable is this is a far smoother saw any vibe than anything on this chassis right so which one well, i think they're actually like close enough to call it a tie no they're not <laughs> well, that's a balance thing you kind of really need to i think pick it up as uh and hold it with two hands like you would actually run it and yeah this is lighter there's no question yeah it's a little bit lighter but one thing i want to add is we always talk about the uh, 
When you go from the 272 to 372, you talk about how you get these quad ports, okay? The same thing happens when you go from this chassis to this chassis. The big distinction is, and I think this is why the 357s and 2156s fall a little bit short, is because you're talking a displacement difference. You know, you're looking at a 48 millimeter jug versus a 46 millimeter jug. So that does change the game quite a bit. You know, if they had stuck with the 48 millimeters on this, it would have, it would have been the legend that this is. So you are getting a little bit of a displacement thing there. The same way you go from, from a, you know, a 365 to a 372 and stuff like that. And what's the, what's the uh, bore of that one? Well, it's 46 millimeter. Oh, 47 on a 359. Okay. All right, 46 on the 357s and 2156s, and this is a 48. So you are getting like, you know, you're getting like another six cc's on this. I think that's a legitimate 62 cc's. So that's where that has the advantage over this. But here again, they're closer, you know, than, you, than most people would think performance-wise. And then it starts to become, well, which one's more comfortable to work with? And, and which I, one's actually, easier to work well, on? Well, work on, I don't think there's a difference there. I, no, I don't. But you just... You don't, you, you're too lazy to take the handle off. That's why <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you got to pull the uh -huh. handle off. The only thing different on this is you got the the, the cylinder cover screws. I don't know, we're, we're we're splitting hairs now. Yeah. They're two real good ones. I'm not saying that this is better, as much as I'm saying that it's it's a coin toss. And this one gets tons of respect, and this gets no respect, and that's what I think is a little bit out of whack. But um, I'm going to call that a tie. And I'm going to go uh, a little counter contrary and I'm going to say this is better than that in my humble opinion because it's just an opinion little tiny details splitting hairs as Bob says but yeah where there is a following on those and there's not so much here as Bob mentioned out I prefer these over those actually I'm shocked at all that I thought you were going to rip these things I, well maybe we should shut up about it then well, we can, until we get ourselves a bunch of these built I got plenty well, I don't. All right, we'll have to get you some. There you go. I kind of skipped over these. It's funny because with me, I skipped over these and went right to 562. And then I dropped back to the 55 to 562 builds. We're going to explore that a little bit later. And then when I had to fix that one uh, saw that had the screw in the uh, decomp hole, I'm like, how come I waited for so long to get into these damn things? You know? Everything I like about the 350, I like about these plus more. I think that's where it comes down. Yeah, he should be surprised. I wasn't going to uh, give him a call. You've totally blown my mind on this. <laughs> I thought you were going to be doing nothing but throwing rocks at him. Nope. I like them. 